Okay na? So, magandang araw sa inyong lahat, mga kaprof, kastudyante, um, katurismo. Ayan. So, andi dito po ulit ang New Mall of Asia uh, professor, Dr. Francisco Monato Ramos, na magbibigay sa inyo ng another major, major, um, well, lecture, um, tungkol sa subject or topic sa tourism. Okay? So, we are going to talk about global Code of Ethics for Tourism ayan, ng um, UNWTO. So, itong lecture na to, um, well, um, disclaimer muna, I really don't own um, the information. Actually, magbibigay lang tayo ng lecture uh, on some part, okay, or discussion sa ibang, sa ibang part lang or um, chosen um, topics under the code. Um, but definitely, ito ay galing sa unwto.org uh, slash global code of ethics for tourism. Ayan. So, yung link, at least na nasabi ko na. So, dun, dun ko kinuha yung information. However, um, bakit ko dapat ituro ito, guys? Kasi, um, during our meeting um, the past years um, with the Department of Tourism and the well, some faculty members ng tourism and hospitality management and of course the um, stakeholders or key players with the Department of Tourism officials, um, we were advised to apply in as much as possible the Global Code of Ethics for Tourism. Napag-isipan ko, well, well in majority of our lecture-based um, courses or subjects must definitely, well, contain um, or yung guided principle ng Global Code of Ethics for Tourism should be the backbone nga naman ng um, bawat courses or subjects natin. In as much as possible if it is applicable. Kasi, lalo-lalo um, na yung mga lecture-based. Katulad ng um, macro-tourism, micro-tourism, um, tourism ethics, I mean, sorry, um, yung sustain uh, tourism sustainability and ecotourism, yung mga ganong mga major-major tourism, well, with the legal aspects of tourism, of course. Um, bali, sa mga susunod na final video natin, okay, ito na yung challenge natin, kaya ako rin, um, isi-share din yung mga lecture na to, kasi, um, ang, ang, ang task ko sa mga students ko ay, um, to do the research, okay, um, applying their learned knowledge from prelim to midterms, okay, ikocompress na namin ngayon yon, and then we are try at, at least we already understood yung mga lecture or yung yung information about that particular course, iba backbone natin or ipa partner natin with this global code of ethics for tourism. So hindi lahat min ng sections, okay, um, madidiscuss ko, but however, most of the topics or mga sections ng, ng article are, um, should we say, applicable naman do sa mga major subjects natin, okay? But, definitely, ang gagawin na lang natin, well, for now, what, what will I do is to discuss um, the 10 articles, okay? And then, yung importanting subset or yung yung importanting uh, section na may be related or might be related dun sa course namin. So, pwede namin, pwede kaming gumawa for example ng isang research uh, based video about well, para, para ma-widen yung information natin about tourism ng mga micro um, perspective um tawag dito um information, okay, ng isang lugar or ng iba't ibang lugar sa Pilipinas and then we are going to incorporate everything into one um, informative video para sa inyo. Um, aside from that also, yung sa legal aspects naman natin, for example, well, ang daming mga ordinances sa mga local community na uh, involves tourism, okay, so we are going to relate that into this particular articles or dung mga sub subsections subsections ng mga articles na yon, yung mga ganong factor. Or kung sa tour guiding naman, for example, um, we have this idea na ginagawa or research-based na ginagawa sa isang lugar dito sa Pilipinas. And then, since yung lugar na yon ay topic natin for um, for tour, for example lang, pwede natin gawan ng ano, 
ng tawag dito, ng magandang script kung paano natin maipapasok yung mga articles na yun. Basta, ang challenge natin ngayong finals ay i-incorporate yung mga articles na to sa lahat ng natutunan natin or application sa lahat ng natutunan natin the past preliminaries and midterms. Okay? So, let's start with Article 1. Uh, article 1, may I quote, Tourism con contri Tourism's contribution to mutual understanding and respect between people, peoples, and society. So, very general muna yung mga um, tawag dito. Um, yung articles. However, we have four sub-5, six sub uh, subsections. However, um, what struck me is... Um, um, article uh, sub article 1, section 1 at 2. And I quote with section 1, the understanding and promotion of the ethical values common to humanity with an attitude of tolerance and respect for the diversity of religious, philosophical, and moral beliefs are both the foundation and the consequence of responsible tourism. Uh, stakeholders in tourism development and tourists themselves should observe the social and cultural traditions and practices of all peoples, um, including those of minorities and indigenous peoples, and to recognize their worth. Second um, section is that tourism activities should be conducted in harmony with attributes and traditions of the host regions ayan, and countries and in respect for their laws, practices, and customs. Well, definitely, um, sa understanding natin with the first two articles or sub-questions to Article 1 of, of this um, Global Code of Ethics for Tourism is that we really have to maintain the balance between responsible tourism okay taking into consideration yung nagtutur tayo we are we are having this kind of activity wherein we are going to visit a particular community and there's a lot of minorities or indigenous people well definitely um nandoon yung respect for their laws practices and customs what we see is that we really have to appreciate their customs beliefs and traditions kasi it is innate with them Okay? As tourists, ayan, as tourists or visitors for that particular community, we have to really what? Um, we have this so-called line or limitation, okay? Na, um, we can, well, as much as possible, we are not there to influence them, okay? Kasi, um, they really have to, um, have this kind of distinct culture, or diverse um, traditions, okay? Na dapat ma-maintain up to what? For the future. Okay? So, if ever we're going to have this kind of um, tawag dito, um, application, at least meron tayong guideline um, that we're going to visit a place and we're just going to visit there and then appreciate lang what we are going to hear, see, and touch yung, yung ma-feel. Okay, as we see or as we watch their um, so-called mga traditions, beliefs, and customs. Okay, at least ang importante doon, we are not there to influence their tradition. Okay, kasi kailangan, ulitin ko, their tradition should be kept, um, tawag dito, hindi naman sa stagnant, okay? Let them grow as as a minority or as as an indigenous people uh, or or community. Pero, okay, ma-appreciate lang natin, okay, um, by way of tourism, yung um, kabuhayan nila or kung paano sila nabuhay bilang isang community and how we could help them in a way that we don't influence, okay, again and again, their customs, beliefs, and traditions. Okay, let's go to Article 2. Article 2 states that um, tourism is a vehicle for uh, individual and collective fulfillment. And it has five sections, okay? Um, ang nakikita ko dito ay, well, um, given ang Article 
1 at Article 2. Again, um, tourism, uh, Article 1, I mean, Article 2, Section 1, states that tourism, the activity most frequently associated with rest and relaxation, sports, and access to culture and nature should be planned and practiced as a privileged means of individual and collective fulfillment. When practiced with a sufficiently open mind, it is an irreplaceable factor of self-education, mutual tolerance, and for learning about the legitimate differences between peoples and cultures and their diversity. Same with dun sa kaninang discussions natin. Well, let's go to section 2. Tourism activities should respect the equality of men and women. They should promote human rights and more particularly the individuals, individual, individual rights of the most vulnerable group. Okay, groups, notably children and elderly, the handicapped, ethnic minorities, and indigenous uh, people. So, nandudun na tayo sa tawag dito, respect or give more importance to those handicapped, okay, um, ethical min uh, et um, ethnic minorities, and of course, yung mga indigenous people natin. Okay, um, let's add yung ano, section 4. Travel for purpose of religion, health, education, and cultural or linguistic exchanges are particularly beneficial forms of tourism and deserve encouragement. Ito yung tipong ano, kapag we visit a, a place, okay, um, or we do some some guiding techniques, di ba? Uh, we, we try to say something yung mga mabuhay, di ba? Yung, yung mga tawag dito, mga expression na... Um, tawag dito, magaganda about that particular place so that if if ever yung yung tourist marireremember niya uh, pwede siyang bumalik dun sa place na yon okay may may something na natutunan tayo dun sa pag-visit natin kahit salita man lang di ba and we are well it's one form of um recognizing or respecting or should we say yung na appreciate natin yung visit natin dun sa lugar nila when we um when we have something or we have learned okay something from their place let's go to article 3 tourism a factor of sustainable development okay um we have how many sub questions as uh, subsections we have 5 for this okay but ang nakakuha sa akin ng ano dito ng attention is nature tourism yung yung section 5 nature tourism and ecotourism are recognized as being particularly conducive to enriching and enhancing the standing of tourism provided they respect the natural heritage and local populations and are keeping with the carrying capacity of the sites okay we have to really value carrying capacity of the sites right now kasi alam nyo um yung overpopulation of guests definitely affects the tourist or the destination itself kasi the more tourist could pollute more or could destroy more this um tourist destinations eh di ba ang aim nga natin in tourism is to um, protect in as much as possible this kind of destinations for the future. So, lalong-lalo na sa mga um, sustainable tourism destinations, okay, we really have to keep the carrying capacities of the sites, okay? Pwede tayong ano, um, tawag dito, pwede tayong humanap ng mga um, ordinances ng isang lugar na, na kung saan po pwede silang, well, meron na silang ano, um, strict regulation uh, about the carrying capacity of their uh, tourism destination or nung um, tawag dito, nung attraction nila. Okay? So, yun yung nakita kong very, one of the most important articles. Let's go now with Article 4. Article 4 states that tourism, a user of the cultural heritage of mankind and contributor to its enhancement. Okay? We have four sub uh, subsections, okay? Pero ang nakakuha sa akin ng attention is um, yung sub sub uh, subsection number four, um, tourism activity should be planned in a way as to allow traditional cultural products, crafts, and folklore to survive and flourish rather than causing them to, de to de degenerate 
and become standardized. Okay? So, ang, ang problem natin is this. Um, we have visited a lot of tourist destinations. Um, kaya lang, tawag dito, um, hindi natin masyadong na-appreciate yung mga folklore, okay, yung mga folklore, yung mga tawag dito, um, their stories behind their uh, culture. Kasi probably, um, they are just, what, um, developing a plan for that particular uh, program uh, dun sa destination. However, yung support for the cultural products, okay, di ba meron, ta- di ba here in the Philippines, we have this so-called one product policy as much as possible. Uh, for example, mangga, sambami mga mangga. Ang daming mangga sa Pilipinas. We have so many kinds of mangoes. Pero, um, when we say the sweetest mango, alam nyo na. The biggest mango, alam nyo na rin. Okay? We are, well, seafood capital. Well, ang daming seafoods um, area paluto. The whole and entire Philippine archipelago. Pero, iisa lang naman ang seafood capital natin. Di ba? So, it's um, one product policy. So, what we could do is to incorporate this kind of destination to our itinerary and then try to appreciate yung um, incl- incl- include those um, cultural products or uh, mga factories, local factories, yung mga weaving um, factories na meron sila, di ba? Uh, in a particular destination and try to appreciate yung mga local products nila. Um, it, with this, we are trying to help these um, local communities help improve their lives through tourism. Okay? Malinaw tayo doon. Article 5 states that tourism a beneficial activity for host communities and um uh, for host countries and communities. Ayan. Sorry. For this um article, we have four sub questions. Ah, so, parang yung nakaka sub question. Sub section, sorry. Okay. Um Okay. <laughs> Dun tayo sa, well, subsection number four. Tourism professionals, particularly investors governed by uh, the regulations laid down by the public authorities should carry out studies of the impact of their development projects on the environment and natural surroundings. They should also deliver with the greatest transparency on, and objectivity information on their future programs and their foreseeable repercussions and foster dialogue with on their contents with the population's concern. Well, kasi nga diba, pag sinabi natin tourism, we are not only talking about the local community but also the government, uh, not only the local community, the government or the local government but also yung mga private sector. Dito na rin papasok guys, um, when we say public se- private sectors, they are these businessmen. Um, di ba? If there are tourists, well, when the, when there is tourism, and there are tourists, there are, there are a lot of people who would buy or would would pay for certain services and buy certain products that would uh, uplift their businesses. But in exchange to the particular ano, uh, monetary um consideration, okay? Um dapat alam din natin we have to focus also what are these companies are up to no to bring back the benefits that tourism is bringing uh, to their business for example uh, they have this so called um yung mga corporate social responsibility diba may mga uh, community ano tayo engagements but definitely we have to focus more on their ano effects on, on tourism kung meron silang mga progra- programs that also cares about tourism. Mm, meron ba nun? Example na lang, sige. Yung isang company or tawag dito, uh, business, bawal nang gumamit ng plastic. They are prohibit, they prohibit people or the local community or, or guest to uh, use plastics, di ba? Alam dami niyan. But, it's not directly tourism in a way, but shopping is one of the, um, na, well, the number one activity in tourism. And it costs a lot of what? Plastic bags, diba? But it, 
it definitely affects tourism in 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 such a way. So that that part, um, they they are now using mga uh, paper paper bags, di ba? Or mga recyclable bags, yung mga ganong factor. Okay, let's talk about Article Six, obligations of stakeholders in tourism development. Um, it has five six sub sections. Tawala subsections, but <clears throat> Um, for um, tawag dito for for this article uh, ang nakikita ko is article um, subsection or section 1 tourism professionals have an obligation to provide tourists with objective and honest information on their places of destination and on conditions of travel hospitality and stays they should ensure that the contractual clauses proposed to their customers are readily understandable as to the nature, price, and quality of the services they commit themselves to providing and the financial compensation payable by them and the event of a unilateral breach of contract on their part. Medyo malalim na kasi <clears throat> it talks about contract but definitely, um, simplihan na lang natin. Okay? When there is an obligation, well, th when there is a contract, there should be an obligation kasi syempre, Ang tawag dito, uh, it's one source of obligation, eh, yung kontrata. So, it's our obligation bilang um, um, tourism advocate, okay? Um, yung, yung ano, to, to inform our guests, uh, the do's and the don'ts, di ba, during the tour, we, we have this uh, so-called parang ano, um, Yung, 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 ano, tawag dito, um, ano ba yung information na yun? Kailangan, <laughs> sorry. Pero it's more of, um, a meeting with the clients, di ba? Bini-briefing natin sila, okay? We are doing some, um, client briefing about a particular destination and then the contracts that we have with the, well, the do's and the don'ts with the place and then the contracts that we have with the, uh, suppliers, kung ano yung bayad na and what are they, uh, ano pa yung mga dapat bayaran if ever that we are there sa mga, sa mga uh, tours natin. Yung, ang boiling point kasi dito sa article na to, yung transparency. Okay? Transparency. Let's go now with Article 7, the right to tourism. And it has how many subsection? It has four. Okay? Um, dun tayo sa ano, sa number one. Okay? Uh, subsection, the prospect of direct and personal access to the discovery and em enjoyment of the planet's resources con constitutes a right equally open to all the world's inhabitants. Ayan. The increasingly extensive participation in national and international tourism should be regarded as one of the best possible expressions of a sustained growth of free time and obstacles. Ayan should not be placed in its way. Medyo malalim ba? But anyway, ganito na lang, tawag dito, um, ayun, ayan, so, we have direct access, di ba, as guest to a particular destination with uh, the natural resources of the planet. Well, right natin yon as tourists, but definitely, that kind of right also deserves a kind of obligation. Okay? Anong obligation natin? Well, in a way, we really have to sustain the growth of, well, or use of these particular resources. Hindi natin po pwedeng gagamitin lang natin yung, yung mga available resources dun sa destinations natin and then we will just left it behind. Hindi. But, di ba ito nga yung mga tinatawag natin na kill nothing but time. Pwede, pwede natin ipasok yung idea na ganon take only but pictures, di ba? Um, pwede tayong mag-selfie, mag-picture, but always think that we are there just to visit and not to destroy every um, single resources na meron ang destination na yon, okay? So, yun lang, nat yun lang dapat natin iisipin. It, it should be well facilitated by both private sector and of course yung local community as well as the local government of that particular place. Kaya hanap tayo ng mga ordinances or mga activities ng mga uh, local government natin sa mga local destination. If they have this uh, kind of um, protection with 
uh, the resources, okay, that really helps tourism uh, on their or in their uh, particular location. Okay, let's go with Article 8, Liberty of Tourist Movements. Ayan, liberty. Lalo-lalo na ngayon, no? Um, lalo na, na yung mga unvaccinated tourists natin. Well, definitely, guys, kasi it, uh, we are very sorry about it, but um, kasi sa batas natin, okay, Yes, we have this so-called liberty or rights for movement. However, um, it may be subject for regulation um, kapag, okay, kapag may mga tawag dito, issue na health na pinag-uusapan or it endangers the public itself. Kaya kita mo, during the pandemic, uh, may mga certain destinations na kinlose nila yung sariling local, locality nila because of that. Well, Kasi, they are just protecting themselves. Okay? Um, nandito tayo sa, we have to support tourism, but not now. Parang ganon. But right now, uh, nag-open naman na sila. So, um, but, aside from that, let's go to, um, um, tawag dito? Ano ba magandang, ano, art, uh, subsections dito? Ah, okay. Ito maganda dito yung subsection number 3. Tourists and visitors should benefit from the same rights as the citizens of the country. Visited concerning the confidentiality of the personal data and information concerning them, especially when these are stored electronically. Okay? There are a lot of cases na yung tinatawag nating Data Privacy Act, di ba? Pero dapat, kung alam lang natin on how they are going to process our personal data as not to, you know, um, expose it in public. Okay, sana yon. So, medyo mahirap itong ano na to, itong um, subsection number three, but we definitely have to research what are those programs of the local government on how they are treating the personal data of the guests entering their particular vicinity. Okay? Let's go now to Article 9. Wow. Ayan, malapit na mag-30 minutes, sorry naman. Um, Article 9, Rights of Workers and, and Entrepreneurs in the Tourism Industry. Um, it's more of what? Yung mga local uh, workers natin. So we are trying to focus more on uh, the local community, yung mga tawag dito, yung mga, well, tourism create jobs, di ba? Well, yung number number 2, Sige, subsec, uh, sub, uh, section number two. Salaried and self-employed workers in the tourism industry and related activities have the right and the duty to acquire appropriate initial and continuous training. Okay? They should be given adequate social protection. Job security should be limited as far as possible and a specific uh, status or status with particular regard to their social welfare should be offered to seasonal workers in the sector. Alam naman natin ang tourism kasi ay seasonal in nature, definitely in some areas of the Philippines or in the Philippines. Um, ang ano lang natin dito focus are these um, uh, so-called um, lo locals, yung mga workers natin are protected by their local community uh, over or um dun sa kanilang workplace, okay, with their um, employers. Hanap tayo ng mga destinations, ano ba yung well, yung best paid yung mga guests or yung mga ano natin, tourism, ano natin, um, should we say, um, workers, ba? At least alam natin, ang ganda pala ng practice sa lugar na to kasi well paid yung mga, yung, yung mga workers nila. Well, definitely, uh, well paid or tawag dito, higher paid workers are happier than those who are paid less. Kasi same, same lang naman yung ano natin, yung service na binibigay natin. Eh. Bakit we are paying uh, less for this particular people? Well, kasi meron niya mga ano, eh, regional, ano, regional um, tawag dito, basis. However, we are talking in the context na yung rightful or tawag dito legal um, monetary reward in that particular place ha, sa mga workers natin sa tourism. So, mag-isip or maghanap tayo ng mga ganon. Let's talk about Article 10. Last na, implementation of the principles of the Global Code of 
ethics for tourism um it has three um sub sections um pero yung number one na lang ang ano natin ang ang itapit natin the public and private stakeholders in tourism development should cooperate in the implementation of these principles and monitor their effective application so ito ngayon yung nilelecture natin let's look for this um local government units and their um, businesses, local businesses na nagbibigay ng um, tawag dito um, well yung gumagawa or nag apply ng ano natin ng, ng uh, lecture natin about global code of ethics for tourism okay? baka may mga magagandang practices sila na po pwede dun na ah okay pwede naman pala yan dito din sa lugar namin diba? so let's enrich these people na nasa lugar natin by re doing research dun sa ibang practices sa ibang lugar, okay? Um, talking about global code of ethics for tourism. Ngayon, guys, now if ever that you have inquiry, don't um, don't hesitate to comment or write it down sa comment box below or subscribe na rin sa ating YouTube channel. But um, itong ano natin, um, video na to ay, well, lecture um, for tourism, okay? Kasi ang purpose natin is to help more people appreciate tourism or help those people na who really wanted to learn more about tourism because definitely tourism is what? One of the most um, talagang income generating industry okay? Sa, sa Pilipinas kasi we are um, well talagang tourism enriched um, country talaga in, in terms of attractions in terms of all sectors of tourism talaga okay so nandito tayo para i-enhance pa natin lahat-lahat yung mga alam natin sa tourism so yan lang po um, if ever meron kayong um, questions, suggestions or correction open na open po tayo dyan just write it dun sa comment box down below okay so ito po ulit ang yung professor uh, dr Kiko Francisco Monato Ramos hanggang sa susunod nating um, lecture ngayong finals dito sa Your Tourism Channel. Bye!